right, so about two or three months ago, maybe, I finally got Eva to sit down and watch the entire Dexter series from Showtime. And I've been trying to get her to watch it forever. Finally, I just I just put it on, because I knew if she saw it, like, in the background, she wouldn't be able to help watching it. This is one of the greatest TV series, in my opinion, to ever be on TV. Um, but re-watching it with her inspired me to go and read the Dexter books, which I had never read. And I really enjoyed them. I really enjoyed the Dexter books. But I want to I want to kind of tell everybody the differences between the books and the show. And if you're interested in reading the books, then, then you know, maybe this will push you to do so or make you decide not to. I don't know. Um, but so there, there are a lot of similarities and there are a lot of differences. I'd say there, there's more differences than similarities. Now, the characters are pretty much the same people. Um, the first part of this video will not be spoilers. I'm going to give you generalities and then um, I'll let you know when the spoilers start. So if you plan on reading the books, I'm not going to ruin them for you. I'll let you know um, when to shut the video off. And then you can come back and watch the rest um, after you've read the books, if you decide to do so. Um, okay, so, and Eva loved the series as well. Dexter's probably uh, her favorite character uh, of all time. <laughs> and uh, and I, I just, I love the show. Obviously, that's why I wanted her to watch it so badly. I knew she would like it. Um, but I had never read the books. And I had heard there were a lot of differences in the books, and I wanted to find out. Okay, so here's the, the, the general differences and similarities. Um, there are eight books, and there are eight seasons of Dexter. Um, the book has a kind of different feel, in my opinion. It's a little more unrealistic. It, it tries to be a little more comedic, I think. Like, it, it's completely first person. It's all in Dexter's head, where the show, it, it would go away from Dexter and follow other characters here and there. Um, so that's one big difference. This is completely first person. It's all from his perspective. And um, I don't know. It, it changes the feel a little bit. It changes the feel a little bit because you don't get to know the other characters as intimately as you do in the TV series. Um, I'd have to say that overall, probably because of Michael C. Hall, I enjoyed the TV series a lot more than the books. Not to say that the books aren't good. I really enjoyed the books. It's just a little different. And Michael C. Hall just gave this life to the character of Dexter that I don't think they could have I don't think they could have chosen they couldn't have cast him any better than choosing Michael C. Hall to play Dexter. So that being said, let me just tell you that um the the books the, the biggest differences are what makes it good. Like <laughs> sorry. The reason it's cool to read the books as well is because the stories are completely different. Now, some of the same things happen in the stories, but every story, like, okay, you know, every season of Dexter has a different antagonist, a different killer that they're trying to catch. Um, well, the books is the same way, except they're all different antagonists. So you don't, you don't know, other than one of the villains, I guess, other than one, they're all different. They're all different. Each book has a new new antagonist, and it's different from the TV series. So that's what was great about the books to me. I didn't have to um, just slug through and, like, rehash the same stories that I've already seen on TV. Okay, so if you're worried about that, if you're worried about just reading basically what you already saw, don't worry about that at all because they're completely different. Completely different villains, completely different um, outcomes in some cases. Um, so... Yeah, I, I would definitely suggest reading the books. I'm just telling you that I prefer the TV series to the books in terms of it made me feel a lot, a lot more. Um, okay, so now we're going to move into the spoiler part where I discuss the 
huge differences between the book and the series. So if you have not read the books and you plan to or want to, please shut the video off now, go read the books, come back later. Um, if you have no interest in reading the books or you've already read the books, stick around. All right. So, in the first story, it's the only one that's really similar to the first season of the show, being that the killer that they're trying to catch ends up being Dexter's brother, Brian. However, huge difference, in the end, Dexter helps Brian get away, so he doesn't die. In fact, he remains a character through all eight of these books, and Dexter and him have a lot more interactions and sometimes even work together and his brother helps him out of some serious jams. So, that's one big difference. Another one is that Sergeant Dokes, whose character I loved in the TV series, um, and was sad to see him die um, in season two, does not die at all in this series. He becomes, uh, he gets kidnapped, he gets uh, mutilated, but he remains in the story. He remains in the story with no tongue and missing arms and legs, I believe. So it's, it's a it's pretty gruesome, but Dokes is still a character throughout all eight of these books. Another huge difference is, in the TV series, um, LaGuardia dies, like, towards the end. Season 7, right? The end of Season 7. Now, in the books, she dies in the very first book. She dies early on. Um, Let's see. So that's the big differences in, in the original story, the first uh, season of Dexter, the, compared to the first book. Um, then as we move through the storyline, a lot of things are switched around. A lot of things are different. So um, the kids in the, in the book, uh, Cody and Aster, the kids are like really deranged, and Dexter believes that they're a lot like him and that they're going to be killers. They're obsessed with death. Um, they want to, like, kill small animals and stuff. Like, they're very deranged, and it's Dexter's goal to kind of guide them, like, through life and how to do it, as Harry did with him. So that's, like, that's like a huge difference to where the kids were kind of these innocent victims in the, in the TV series where in the book they're more like manipulators and people who um, want to do insane things. Um... So that's a big difference. Uh, another big difference is Dexter and Rita end up having a little girl, not a little boy that they name Harrison. They end up having a little girl that they name Lillian. So that's a different twist on it where Dexter has these feelings, you know, for a daughter rather than a son. He's not, he's not so much worried about them becoming a killer, etc. Um, an another thing is that Deborah actually has a baby, Dexter's sister. She actually has a baby of her own, and it is a boy. And that happens uh, about halfway through the series, I think. So that changes that dynamic a little bit. Um, let's see. Rita does die in the book series, but she dies much later on. Much later on. If you remember in the TV series, she died halfway through. She died in season four. And in the book series, she doesn't die until the end of book seven. So she's definitely a part of the story. Um, she's still just as annoying of a character, just a little bit different. <laughs> she's a little bit different kind of annoying. But she's definitely still extremely annoying in the book, just like she was in the TV show. Um, in my opinion. Uh, let's see. The way the story ends. The way the story ends, Deborah doesn't die. In fact, um... Dexter dies, right? And in the the TV show, they did like this end scene where it was like Dexter was still alive, right? And he had left his kids, not his kids, he had left his son with someone from the past. Um, but in in the book, Dexter dies, or so we imagine. Like, there's no end scene, right? There's no end scene to let us know for sure that he's alive. But since it's in first person, 
it basically he, he he goes fades all to black and it is telling you that he's dead um, but they could definitely write another book and just say like oh he almost died he passed out he wakes up in the hospital you know they could keep it going for sure so it's a little open-ended for me because he dies but since it's first person you don't know if he's really dead I mean you don't know what the experience of death is so it just fades to black you you think he drowns, he dies, and um, that's the end of the book. So, we're, we're to assume, I think, that he dies, but the way the author wrote it, they could definitely resurrect Dexter in the books. Um, Deborah ends up with the kids. Like I said, she doesn't die. Um, she ends up with uh, Cody and Aster, and Lillian. And let's see. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's those are the biggest differences that I found. Uh, it, it definitely changes the story quite a bit. It's still the same character of Dexter. Um, like I said, I didn't feel as much for the character. I think they put a little more emotion on purpose into the TV show than they did in the books because in the books he's much more of this sociopath psychopath who really doesn't have any feelings so um i really enjoyed the books i would definitely recommend them they were a lot of fun i breezed right through them it took me like a month to do all eight books and um yeah i really enjoyed them but if you're worried about it being similar to the tv series uh, or so similar to the tv series that that you won't enjoy it that the it won't be anything original don't worry about that at all it's completely original stories all different things happen Obviously, I just told you a bunch of the huge differences, um, but, and even, even I knew going in that, like, Dokes doesn't die, and that LaGuardia dies early, and I still enjoyed these books very much. It, um, they're very comedic, darkly comedic, um, they're very gruesome in some, some points where the show wasn't, um, the show was very gruesome, don't get me wrong, and very dark, but... It had a little more emotion to it than the book. The book was just more like, I don't know, killerish. But um, there, there was, there was still a lot more attempts at comedy. But it was all in Dexter's head. All the comedy basically was in Dexter's head. Nothing funny really happened outside of what Dexter's actual thoughts were on each subject. So, anyway, that's. I wanted to make this video. I'm sure there's plenty of videos like this that compare the two, but. Dude, that's what I do on this channel is I make the videos I want to make and if people like it they like it and if they don't they don't but I don't know this is this is what's going on with me I just finished the book series and I wanted to talk about it so if you like videos like this where I just talk about whatever I want to talk about TV movies books whatever this is the channel for you sometimes I just rant about Taco Bell so, uh, please subscribe for more. If you enjoy this video, let me know what you thought of the Dexter book series versus the Dexter TV show, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.